<laughs> Welcome to Avian Adventures from the Raptor Center at Quest. This episode will answer the question, what is a raptor? Avian Home Adventures was hatched in March of 2020 when the worldwide pandemic caused Carolina Raptor Center to close its doors. Unable to meet our mission of educating people and inspiring them to connect with nature and act on behalf of the planet, our team turned to social media and started a daily Facebook Live series that continued for 70 episodes and reached over 150,000 viewers. Avian Adventures is the evolution of that concept. Its mission? To take you on weekly adventures with the birds and the humans at the Raptor Center. Each adventure will answer a cultural or scientific question in order to help you connect with the birds that give us inspiration every day. To get us started, we will explore the question, what is a raptor? It's a bird. It's a dinosaur. It's a flying killing machine? No, it's a raptor. For many years, what defined a raptor was pretty simple. A curved beak, sharp talons, excellent eyesight, and active during the day, also known as diurnal. This standard definition included hawks, eagles, and falcons, but meant that species like vultures, seriamas, and owls have been either in or out, depending on who you talk to. But in recent years, scientists have come up with a better way of classifying raptors and birds of prey to decrease the confusion. A team of scientists from the Peregrine Fund, University of North Texas, EDM International, Ornithology, Hawk Mountain Sanctuary, and Hawk Watch International got together to come up with a new definition. To do this, they looked at the ancestors of raptors and found that six groups could trace their roots to a raptorial land bird and still today have a predatory lifestyle. Raptorial land birds are called raptorial because they kill and eat vertebrate animals, and land because they primarily nest, hunt, and spend their days over the land. Essentially, the new definition is less about what you look like and more about who your great-grandparents were. So who is in and who is out based on this new definition? I bet you can't wait to find out. Hawks, eagles, and falcons are all still in. Owls are definitely in. Old and new world vultures, both in. And the most surprising of all is that Sariamas are in. This makes Yaya, the Raptor Center's red-legged Sariama, very excited. Some previously considered Birds of prey that are out include the small but mighty loggerhead shrike, the charismatic laughing kookaburra, and the ubiquitous common raven. So why are these classifications so important? Well, the reason is that it helps us set priorities and focus our research and conservation efforts in a very specific way. Organizations with raptor in their name can now provide wholehearted support to vulture conservation in Africa and India. They can study the migratory habits of hawks, osprey, and eagles, and protect the rainforest and savanna in South America to conserve populations of Sariyama for future generations. We can make small changes in our daily lifestyle to combat climate change and preserve habitats for our raptorial neighbors buy local produce and meat from nearby farmers, reduce our consumption of single-use plastics. Did you know that only 10% of plastic actually gets recycled, even if you put it in the bin? Compost our food waste to enrich our gardens. Working together, we can preserve raptor habitats and clean up the waste that litters our streams, roadways, and landscapes. Thanks for joining us today for Avian Adventures. We hope you'll be back next week for another look at why birds inspire and connect us to the natural world.